Welcome to part two of your first flight on the VATSIM network. In part one, which I hope you watched already, I just provided a lot of pre-flight briefing information, things that are very important to be aware of, and a few tips uh, for flying on the VATSIM network, including talking about how to use the altimeter, how to use the transponder, how to find where ATC is, and how to file a flight plan. Now that all that is taken care of, all we actually have to do is fly. So uh, let's hop right back in the airplane and uh, let's go ahead and fly that circuit. All right, so we've got the airplane all up and running and we're ready to start talking to ATC about what we want to do. So again, if you're unsure, you can look on your VATSPY or your VATSIM map page, or you can check your client here to see what the frequencies are. So we can tune in the ATIS on 132.750. So up here you can see this says COM, it's a communication radio, and it's highlighted here with a little blue highlight, so we can change that frequency, turn the big knob to change the big number, and change the small, turn the small knob, inner knob, to change the small number. So we're looking for, again, 132.750. Aircraft should operate mode C on no taxiways and runways. Turbojet departure maintain 250 knots until advised by ATC. VFR departure indicate type, field location, and requested heading. Read call runway hold short instructions and altitude assignments. Advise on initial contact. You have information Bravo. Information Bravo. By the way, it always Midway helps to have a pen handy information, Bravo, zero, three, five, three, zero. when you're flying Web to write one, stuff down. Zero, at one, four, gust, two, eight. Visibility one zero. Ceiling two five thousand broken. Temperature four. Two point minus three. Altimeter two nine or nine or eight. Area navigation Yankee two two left approach in U. Landing and departing runway two two. North is two airmen. Aircraft should operate mode C on no taxiways and runways. Turbojet departure maintained. All right, so I'm going to flip that back away. Uh, but you heard the information there. They said the two twos are the active runway. They gave us the altimeter setting. And as I said, it helps to have a pen anytime you're operating in VATSIM or anywhere with an airplane so that you can write down things like altimeter settings, information, etc. So we're now going to turn, tune in the ground frequency for Chicago Midway here. But before we talk to the ground controller, let's make sure that we have current charts for uh, Chicago Midway Airport so that we can find out uh, what the taxi route that we're going to be given is. So one of the easiest places to go onto the internet to find free charts for uh, the United States and uh, Canada is on flightplan.com. This is actually a professional level flight planning uh, service. Uh, you can sign up for a free account and uh, you'll be able to get access to Canadian and US charts. If you don't sign up for an account, you'll only be able to see US charts. Canadian charts will not be available to you. So you type in the aircraft code or the airport code that you're looking for, KMDW. And here's a whole bunch of charts. The thing we're really interested in just as a VFR pilot is the airport diagram. So we can have this on our screen. We can, you can even download this and print this off to have with you if you want to have a reference to it. So we're uh, going to be departing on one of the two, two runways here. So you'll see all the taxiways here. We're going to write down the taxi route and then we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure where we're parked at the moment. If I go outside though and look, I can't even tell. We're on one of the corners, but I can't even tell 100%. I think we're on the western side of the field, actually. Let's look. Uh, let's see. We are facing west. So, yeah. Because we're facing west, we're pretty much at the end of the field. We're at the western side of the field. So, basically, just from looking at this, I'm going to guess that we are parked right about here. So, we're going to have to probably taxi all the way around here. So, it helps to kind of look at the chart before you even ask for taxi instructions, because then you can kind of see some of the taxiways, and you might get a good idea of what you think the taxiway will be the taxi route will be. Uh, so have that up, have that ready to look at as they're giving the tax instructions and write it down if you're uh, unfamiliar so that you can uh, quickly look at it and be able to see what the, what they told you after you've written it down and translate it to something you can do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tune in 121.65. We did. 
So we're just going to call for a radio check. Watch the lights here to make sure they do light up properly when you push your push to talk. Midway ground, hello, Charlie November Alpha Bravo Sierra, radio check. Charlie November Alpha Bravo Sierra, 5x5. Five five. Charlie November Alpha Bravo Sierra, thank you very much. Uh, we have information Bravo, request taxi for circuit. November Alpha Bravo Sierra, stand by. All right, so we can talk to him. Now he's just going to make sure he has our flight plan and all of our information. Number Alpha Bravo Sierra, runway 22 right, taxi via Whiskey, cross 13 center, 13 left, November, Papa, ho short, runway uh, 22 right. November Alpha Bravo Sierra, runway 22 right, will taxi via Whiskey, cross 13 center, 13 left, November Papa, hold short, runway 22 right. Alright, so anytime you get an instruction from ATC, it's a good idea to just read back exactly what you heard and what you think you understood to make sure that there's no misunderstanding. So I believe we're right here, so he said taxi Whiskey, which would be this taxiway right here, cross 13 center and 13 left uh, November and Papa and hold short of 22 right right here at Papa so this is Papa right here we'll hold short and we'll plan to do our departure from there so I'm gonna keep that on my other screen always keep that handy take the parking brake off I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make that turn to the left so we're gonna just make the turn to the right Try not to hit the guy. So this is Whiskey Taxiway right here. We've just got to get to it. And a lot of the airports in Flight Simulator will actually have signs too to help you out. So the yellow letter on a black background in the middle, the F in the background is the taxiway we're on, Foxtrot, and then the other one is the black back black letters on a yellow background is where you can go. You'll usually see arrows with them, so whiskey. So we're turning left here, which is north. And this is now, we're right here, and we're turning this way, and going up here. So keep those uh, taxi instructions handy. I'm not going to teach you how to fly the airplane today so much. Uh, there's probably plenty of other good videos out there to fly 172. My, my real goal today is to show you how to fly a circuit pattern and how to talk to ATC in the VATSIM network. Now you'll notice that we did get a couple of runway crossings and a couple of hold shorts in our instructions. If you're ever in doubt whether or not you were cleared across a runway, stop and ask. Any controller will be happy to verify for you that you've been cleared across. So we were cleared to cross 13 Center. I wrote it down on my sheet of paper in front of me. Cleared to cross 13 Center. Even when you're cleared to cross, look both ways just to confirm that the runway is truly clear controllers are human beings too it is possible for them to make a, make a mistake to make an error so always look both ways before you cross the runway to make sure it is clear so we're crossing 13 center we're going to taxi down November to 22 right I've set the first notch of flaps for our takeoff I haven't been very good about doing checklists I'm not trying to do checklists on this. I'm really just trying to show you how to fly a circuit pattern and uh, how to talk to ATC. This is 13 left, which we were also cleared across. Signs are on the pavement and everywhere. At major airports, you'll see signs on the pavement. Smaller airports, you may not see as much. Alright, so we're now just about there. We're just crossing this northern part here. We're going to reach uh, 22 right here in a moment. 
And because there is a tower controller online, I think, assuming they haven't logged off, and you never know, people log off at any moment in time. Nope, MDW tower is still there. So we can be ready for that. This is the hold short point for one for two two right. See right here? So make sure we stop before we get to this yellow stop line that crosses the taxiway. So we're going to stop there. And we're going to just double check a couple of things. Now the first thing that I didn't do, and the controller didn't call me on it, was I didn't activate my transponder. It's still off. So let's go ahead and turn it into altitude mode. So when we take off, it's transmitting in altitude mode. And we'll also make sure that we're squawking because we weren't given another code. The 1200 code is the default code for VFR. It indicates that you're VFR, that you don't have a specific code. I'm just going to put the parking brake on for a second. So make sure you're squawking 1200. If the controller gives you something else to squawk, just type in that the, the four numbers and you'll see them appear here. So if they were to give you 1201, you would type in 1201 like that, but they didn't give us anything. So we're just going to go back to 1200. And the other thing we didn't do is we didn't verify when we got to this airport the field elevation. So if we look at, again, our airport chart, you'll find somewhere on it, you'll find right here in the corner in a box, field elevation 620 feet. So we should be at 620 feet sitting on the ground. It looks like our altimeter is pretty accurate here. I'm just going to actually turn it so it's perfectly 620. And then for our circuit altitudes, we're going to need to just quickly do some addition here. So 600 feet plus another 500 feet is going to be 1,100 feet. So we... I'll, Alpha Bravo Sierra, contact tower now, one, three, five, decimal two. Call the tower, one, three, five, decimal two, Alpha Bravo Sierra. One, three, five, decimal two. I'm just going to finish this explanation, then I'll call him. I'm just going to turn the frequency so I don't forget it. Ah, sometimes I hate the spinning knobs in this simulator. There it is, one, three, five, point two swapped up to the active. So we always just round to the nearest 100 for circuit altitude. So uh, 500 feet will turn our crosswind at 1100 feet and of course our circuit will itself be flown at 1600 feet. Got 35.2, I think we're ready to go. Midway Tower, Charlie November, Alpha Bravo Sierra, short of 2 2 right, ready for takeoff. Alpha Bravo Sierra, I've got you 5 by 5 yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Cessna Alpha Bravo Sierra, right close traffic, runway 22 right, wind 170 at 1428, runway 22 right at Papa, clear for takeoff. Copy the right hand pattern, 22 right from Papa, clear for takeoff, and uh, Alpha Bravo Sierra. All right, clear for takeoff, and the controller specified a right hand circuit, so we're going to make a right hand turn throughout our circuit today. Add some power, look both ways, the runway appears to be clear. Normally we put our landing light and our strobe light on when we enter the runway. Is this now Alpha Bravo Sierra? Can I get you to squawk mode C? Alpha Bravo Sierra? It's certainly no problem. All right, so we have to squawk mode C. I did turn the transponder into altitude tran reporting mode. However, uh, due to the limitations of Microsoft Flight Simulator right now, it did not automatically change this. It will eventually in the future when they properly finish developing Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will automatically connect and change your client for you. When you press buttons in the simulator, it will properly change the uh, transponder mode. But since it's not on, uh, automatically, I have to do it manually in vPilot. So just click it once, you'll see it lights up. That means you're now transmitting in altitude uh, transmitting mode. Don't forget to put it back in standby when you're done flying. Lined up on the runway, and here we go. Full power for takeoff. Gonna do my best to keep it straight. Looking for about 60 knots. At 60 knots, we will just gently pull the aircraft up off the runway. So there's 60 on the speed right there, on the airspeed. Just gently pull up. You don't want to pull up too far. You want to keep the speed between 60 and 70 knots for the climb. Do your best to climb straight ahead. And one thing I should have done as well before I took off is actually bug the heading of the runway because that'll help you fly a nice circuit pattern. There we go. 
All right, so we've now reached 1,100 feet. Big hand on the one. Start a gentle turn to the right. With climbing turns, we always keep them gentle. I'm losing a little bit of speed, so I'm going to let the nose down just a little bit. Gain a little bit of speed. Keep the keep the climbing turns to 10 to 15 There's degrees. You don't want to lose. Sierra, can I get you to beacon 4672? Okay, we'll squawk 4672, stand by Alpha Bravo Sierra. Probably should have asked us to do this before we took off. All right, but there's our crosswind leg because there's our runway heading at the wingtip. So we're 90 degrees from that runway now. I believe he said 4672 because I got my hands on the controls. I couldn't write it down, so I'm going to put in 4672. I'll verify that in one second just because we're about to reach 1600. So we're doing all sorts of things at the same time here. Attention aircraft, Midway Tower closing, uh, contacting 119.0. All right, so there is 1600. We're going to level it off. We can retract the flaps now. And we can also reduce the power. So we're now turning onto our downwind, which means that the runway heading should be right at our tail. And we gained a little bit of altitude there, so I'm just going to nose the airplane back down to get that back again. And Midway Tower, can you say again the frequency to contact again for Alpha Bravo Sierra? Uh, that's going to be uh, center spinal, uh, Chicago approach, 119.0. Chicago approach on 119.0. Thank you, Alpha Bravo Sierra. So people come and go on the VATSIM network. If there's another controller online that can take over, you'll be pointed to the new frequency. So there we go, 119.0. Sometimes it's a lot to do all at once. But there we go. We're not quite... Uh, parallel to the runway, are we? But we are we are kind of flying more or less parallel to the runway. It's not quite perfect. I think we're about 10 degrees off there, aren't we? And we gained a whole bunch of altitude there while we weren't looking for a second. It takes a lot of effort to kind of fly a good circuit pattern. Chicago Approach, hello, Charlie Golf, November Alpha, Bravo Sierra with you. Just about to turn a right base for 2-2 right in midway touch and go. Why does no one answer me the first time today? So once we start, once we reach this point, we're about 45 degrees past the end of the runway. We reduce the power, about 1700 RPM in the 172 works well. Allow the airplane to start slowly descending, about 500 feet per minute. Turn onto the base where we're perpendicular to our runway again. There we go, and there's our runway we're gonna land on. And we should be descending. We went a little bit too far, we're a little bit too close on the downwind, so we pretty much are turning final now. Chicago Approach, Charlie Golf, November Alpha, Bravo Sierra, turning final runway, 2-2 right at midway for a touch and go. Charlie, November Alpha, Bravo Sierra, Chicago Approach, wind 17014, gust 2-8, runway 2 left, clear to land. Now uh, you're going touch and go, sorry, clear for the option. Okay, thanks for taking the touch and go, and we're on uh, 2 2 right, uh, Alpha Bravo Sierra. No, oh, sorry, the tower didn't give me a brief. Uh, runway 2 2 right, runway 2 2 right, clear for the option. Thank you very much. 2 2 right, clear for the option, Alpha Bravo Sierra. Approach low, never All right, so we also should have our first notch right, of flaps right, out there. I'm not flying a very good right. circuit pattern here. I'm a little bit high, so I'm going to reduce power even more to increase our rate of descent. And I'm going to extend a second notch of flaps to help us slow down a little bit here. We want to be approaching at 70 knots here in the 172. Okay, now I've taken off a little bit too much power. The other nice thing you'll notice on the side of the runway, the two white and the two red lights are visual guidance indicators when you're in a circuit or when you're on approach to a runway. You want to see two whites and two reds. If you see more reds, it means you're too low. If you see more whites, it's too high. But two white and two red means you're perfectly in the middle. Now I see three reds. I'm a little bit too low. So I'm just going to add a little bit of power and pull up just a little bit, not too much. And you'll see it come back in. You want to kind of aim just a little bit past the numbers. Past 
power to idle. Just a nice touchdown. Retract the flaps back to just the first notch, and then give it full power, and away we go again. And that's how we do a touch and go. Just retract the flaps to uh, take off position. Mic off runway two carry line runway. Sixty knots. Line for wait for rotate. Again, we're looking for 1,100 feet. We start our crosswind turn, so we want to keep it between 60 and 70 knots in the climb. If you're going too slow, just drop the nose slightly. Uh, Skyhawk, just, uh, uh, just departed runway 22 right, make right close traffic, wind 17014, gust 28, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. Oh no, you're a southbound departure. Here at 3 Mike Alpha, fly heading 180, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. Here's 1100 feet, we start our right turn, gentle right turn, because we're still climbing. No more than a 15 degree angle of bank for a climbing turn. Or you'll stop climbing and you'll just start, you'll just be turning. So you can hear the controller is human too. He's just here for fun and uh, he's a hobbyist as well. So controllers do make mistakes. Uh, don't be afraid to uh, speak up if you think there's been an error. So there's our crosswind leg. We should be just about perpendicular to that runway. That looks pretty good there. And we're just about there, 100 feet to go. We're going to already start to pitch down because it takes us just a little bit of time to level off here. We'll also retract the flaps. And we'll commence our turn onto the downwind. Try to do a better job maintaining 1,600 feet this time than I did last time. Now that we've accelerated to about 90 knots, reduce the power a little bit, about 2,300 RPM to the downwind. And there's the downwind heading. We should be we should be just about parallel to that runway, uh, which we took off from, which we're pretty close this time. Uh, and if we're at appropriate Alpha, distance Roger. in a 172, it should be about uh, halfway down the wing on. strut, which it pretty much is. So we're at about the appropriate uh, distance a for a circuit pattern in a 172. Alpha, Still climbing a little bit, so I'm just going to continue to trim forward a little bit and reduce the power a little bit to try and maintain 1,600 feet precisely as I can. Now normally, we would call our controller right about here, a beam in the middle of the runway in what we call the mid-down one and tell him what our intentions are. Chicago Approach, Charlie November Alpha Bravo Sierra, request a full stop, runway 22 right. Chicago Alpha Bravo Sierra, wind 17014, gust 28, runway 22 right, clear to land. 22 right, clear to land, Alpha Bravo Sierra. Just watch that the heading doesn't drift as you fly. Sometimes it will drift a little bit left or right, so just make sure you try and keep that heading as precisely as possible. And what we're looking for here to turn base is when the runway, the threshold of the runway, is basically about 45 degrees behind us. Alpha, so you want to look just about 45 degrees Bravo. behind us, right about there. My discretion clear of the class Bravo. For so we start a right turn. We reduce the power to about 1,700. If you look at the bottom there for the tachometer. About 17 is what we're looking for, for power on the base initially. Get the first notch of flaps to help slow down a little bit. And just at the heading indicator, looks like we're pretty much on that base leg heading right now, which, yeah, that looks about right. We're about 45 degrees. We're a little bit high, though. Again, we should be about 1,100 feet as we cross this point here, and actually I think I'm overshooting it a little bit here. Uh, so we're a little bit high, so we're going to reduce power even more. And I overshot the runway center line. I'm not perfect. This is why you do circuits, is to practice your maneuvering of the airplane to get better at it with practice. Alright, so I've reduced the speed, and we are still losing a little bit of altitude. You'll see that uh, the lights next to the runway are now all white, which means I am too high for this approach, so I'm going to add another notch of flaps to help provide some more drag and increase our rate of descent a little bit here. Don't want to just descend too quickly, but you want to lose a little bit of altitude so you're closer to the appropriate angle. I've got one red, three whites and one red, which means I'm a little bit high, but I'm not too high. There's two reds. If I keep going down at the same rate, eventually I'll get three reds, so I want to just stop going down quite as quickly there. So 
So I added a little bit of power and I pitched up a little bit. I'm going a little bit faster than I should. Reducing power a little bit. Okay, Red Mike Alpha, leaving controlled airspace, radar service terminated, squawk maintained, VFR frequency change approved. Right, over to the combo squawk VFR, through Mike Alpha, thank you. Okay, we got all the reds, but we're pretty much right over the runway threshold. Once you've landed, you want to vacate the runway as quickly as possible. Don't turn onto another runway unless ATC instructs you to, so look for taxiways. This is a runway right here, so we're not going to turn here. We're going to slow down, and we're going to make the next turn onto a taxiway. Look for yellow signs, and blue lights would usually indicate a taxiway. This might be another runway. It is, because it's got white edge lights, not blue edge lights. But here's a taxiway, so we'll go ahead and turn right onto the taxiway. Once you turn off the runway, continue straight ahead until you've gone across the hold lines. These hold lines indicate the protected area for a runway, so another aircraft can't use this runway until you're on the other side, until you're clear of the runway's protected area. Scott Alpha Bravo Sierra, you going to the west ramp? A firm going to the west ramp, please, Alpha Bravo Sierra. Roger, Foxtrot Alpha to the ramp, good night. Foxtrot Alpha to the ramp, thank you, Alpha Bravo Sierra, good day. Good day. Okay, so, uh, Foxtrot Alpha, Foxtrot Alpha to the ramp, so Foxtrot uh, Alpha to the ramp, so we can take Foxtrot and Alpha. So we're on Foxtrot right now, we landed here, we turned off here, we're just going to take the first left here on Alpha. If you have any after landing flow, you can do it, I'm going to retract the flaps, I'm going to turn off my landing light and my strobe, and that's it. And that's it, we've now done our circuit pattern. We've talked to ATC, we've talked on the radio, changed frequencies a few times. And the important thing with ATC is to do your best to communicate. Follow proper procedures. Always start with who you are, where you are, and where you want to go. Now here's an interesting thing, and you'll see this periodically in, in, the, uh, in the simulator. You may see that your uh, taxiways don't line up. So here Alpha continues across Foxtrot, but here in the simulator it does not. Er, so if that's going to affect the way you taxi at all, just tell ATC. Uh, ATC on VATSIM is very familiar with the idea that lots of people are flying different simulators with different scenery. So if something is not in your scenery that they ask you to do, if a runway or a taxiway is missing, you just tell them. In this case, I don't think we're going to have a material impact on the uh, taxiing. We'll just continue straight ahead on Foxtrot and go to the apron. It sounds like there's nobody else here on the ground, really. But that's basically it. That's how you deal with uh, ATC. That's how you do a circuit in VATSIM. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, it is a little bit challenging to do a whole bunch of things at once, to multitask, to fly the airplane, and talk on the radio and do various tasks at once. So. Uh, a circuit is a great way to practice your piloting skills so that you can get better at uh, learning to do all these things at the same time. So I hope this has given you a little bit more confidence in uh, getting out there on the VATSIM network. Uh, it's a great way to learn how to fly. It adds a huge amount of depth talking to real people and dealing with uh, other people, you know, and their their human failings as much as uh, as anything else. Uh, nobody out there is perfect, and we're all going to get out there and uh, hopefully learn something, though, along the way. So I hope you learned something watching this video, and uh, stay tuned. I'll have some more uh, helpful VATSIM tutorials uh, coming up in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night.